Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Building Up God's Kingdom television broadcast. I am Apostle Brian L. Morgan. I'd like to thank you and welcome you for tuning in to our first broadcast. Amen. We have a powerful kingdom message for you this morning. I'm so thankful for you. If you have your Bibles, please get them. We'll have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into the word of the living God. Amen. I just want to thank you again for this first TV broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. We love you. We glorify you. Father, we just want to thank you for the privilege to minister to those that are called by your name, O oh God, that your power will flow through the atmosphere, O oh God, to every television a television set, every household, every resident, oh God, that your power by your spirit, Father, would touch all those, Lord God, that need healing, Father, that need deliverance, that need just all your goodness to flow in, Father. Father, work through me, through my vocal cords, speak through my mouth, think through my mind, all the things that you have placed on the inside me for your people. Father, we just want to give you praise and glory and thanksgiving, Father, for it in the mighty matchless name of Jesus and by his shed blood everybody said amen hallelujah to Jesus well I want to thank you for tuning in this morning like I said we have a powerful kingdom message the building up of God's kingdom that's so powerful when the Lord gave that to me last year and uh, it was it was it's so significant for what's going on today in in Highland Park uh, our church building a house upon the rock Christian church in Highland Park in the Detroit area as well as in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the, in the South as well. As an apostle of God, God has given me a kingdom message to come against all things that are evil. We look at the world today. We look at the situation today with all the things going on, the pandemic, racism, all the things that are com coming up against everybody, not just people that are saved, not just people that, that have given their lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved. I'm talking about every human being has been affected by the situations and the circumstances in the world. We want to stand with everybody, but we want to preach the kingdom message. And I think a lot of times as the church, we have gotten away from the kingdom, gotten away from uh, uh, the, the, the message that the Lord Jesus Christ preached when he walked 2,000 years ago. So I really want to, uh, the message uh, I'm going to minister today, and we're probably going to do it next Sunday at the same time. The Lord spoke to me after my prayer time this morning. Kingdom confrontation. I'll say that one more time, one more again. Kingdom confrontation. In other words, the kingdom, when Jesus came preaching, the kingdom was what he stood, what he released and healed people, delivered people. He ministered to people. He, he addressed the circumstances. He addressed the situations, the things that were going on on the earth at that time. And it hadn't changed. I think God's people have gotten away from it. They become more religious, more churchy, more traditionalism. I call it religiosity. This has nothing to do with religion. It has all to do with God's kingdom, power, and authority. Amen. And so we want to get into it. I'm going to take my time. We don't have a, lo a lot of time, but I want to get into this. And, and when I say something, it's not me saying it per se. I'm saying it. God works through me, but I'm going to show you scripture and verse to back up everything that I'll minister and teach on. Amen. So if you have your Bibles and kind of get in the uh, habit of doing that with me, because I'm a Bible teacher, uh, we, there's, there's teaching and there's preaching. Now, teaching is for instruction. It's for information. Preaching is more inspirational. Amen. But I show sure need some instruction when I get inspired. Amen. Acts chapter 1. We're going to start right there. Acts chapter 1. We look at the first verse. We want to get into the word and just look at this. Amen. In verse 1, it says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Powerful statement right there. Unto the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, that's the key, had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen, amen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Now, that's the key to, if I were you, I would take note of that infallible proofs, amen, being seen of them 40 days 
and speaking of things, listen, pertaining to the kingdom of God. It wasn't no church service. It was him talking to them about things pertaining to the kingdom. Verse number four. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which said, He, you have heard of me. Verse number five. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall, or ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence, of course, you're talking about the day of Pentecost, the 50th day. Jesus was on the earth 40 days, and five, over 500 people saw him. Amen. But then the 50th day, of course, during the Passover, this was the day of Pentecost, the 50th day where the power of the Holy Ghost came into the upper room. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The 120 was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's another teaching about the Spirit. Amen. So we see here, key thing, I want, to, I want you to see this now. Take note of this. Jesus taught, he showed infallible proofs on the kingdom. He spoke about the kingdom for 40 days. Okay, I don't know if every, four, every day of those 40 days he talked about the kingdom, but when you see something in the Bible where it notates what Jesus did after his passion, after he was risen, 40 days of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It wasn't about the church. The church came out of the kingdom. The church didn't birth the kingdom, but the kingdom birthed the church. I want y'all to see this now. One of the things you're going to have to realize that in the beginning, Adam didn't go to church. Adam didn't go to church. Adam walked with God in the cool of the morning. He didn't have to go to church. So God was teaching him back then, I made you God over this earth. And that's another mystery and secret we need to kind of see by revelation. Intellectual things, when we look at stuff in the Bible, will not give you the truth about the matter until you get it by the Spirit. Amen. And so Adam didn't go to church. He was over this whole earth. They call Satan the God over this earth. But Adam was actually the God over this earth until he gave his authority over to the devil. And that's another kingdom part. We may get into that in the next week, upcoming weeks. And so here it is, Jesus. I want to make sure we see this as we go forward. Jesus taught of things pertaining to the kingdom. Yes, sir, I heard the Holy Spirit. Basilius, rule, reign. Okay, that's what the kingdom means. Also in, in the Hebrew, reign, dominion, or rule. Amen. Authority, power, right? So he came establishing something. Amen. Go to Ma uh, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go there right quick and take a look at another note. Matthew chapter 4. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 4. Amen. Now, Jesus, prior to this, what I'm getting ready to show you in the text, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 17. Jesus, prior to this, he was in the wilderness. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Why? Because he was getting ready to start his earthly ministry. Okay? And so, the fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted of the devil. The devil came to him, tempting him, right? Said, if you be the son of, son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you read the text in Luke, and I think it's another, uh, uh, another in Mark, it says the same similar, you know, in, the, in Mark, Mark's gospel, right? But here, uh, here, Jesus, after his tempting, he came, he, uh, I'm going to start at verse 12 and come on up and give you a little scripture reading a little bit. Verse 12, he says, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which up upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon and Nephetelim, right? This is the prophet I told him about this. It was Isaiah, verse 14, going to tell you that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Okay. Right. Amen. Verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And then which sat in the region and shadow of death, light had sprung up. Right now in the United States, in every nation, there needs the light of God's glorious gospel of the kingdom to begin to show itself, okay? 
We see the nations rising up against nations as Matthew 24, Jesus talked about the sign of the times. We see these things happening in, in this earth. But what is the answer? The word of the Lord, like I said, came to me this morning after three o'clock in the morning. I was praying in the Holy Ghost and I and I and I laid there and in my stupor. I heard the Lord say this to me. Kingdom confrontation, kingdom confrontation. Write that down. Kingdom confrontation. One of the things you're going to have to realize. And if you when I read this verse 17, you're going to see what I mean. We the anything dark must be confronted. Now. Not confronting it in a way that is, is just natural, intellectual, uh, to rising up together with the, the marches. All the marches, that's okay. That's, that's good. But when you fight against a diabolical being, which is a spirit, you need to fight in the spirit. I didn't say fight the devil because there's no fight but the fight of faith. And so as we begin to understand how to build up God's kingdom. We must confront the, 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 the situations and circumstances with the kingdom message. There is a mandate for the body of Christ to begin to preach the kingdom. In Revelations 1, 6, he called us kings and priests. He didn't call us priests and then kings. He called us kings and priests. Christ is the king of kings. So what kings other than him? Our kings, us. Amen. It's in the Bible. And so if you are a Bible believer, right, and, and, and I'm talking to everyone, whoever is not a Bible believer, I'm talking to you how we stop the pandemic, how we stop racism, which racism comes from the devil. Racism is a spirit. Racism is a schism. Racism is a division against all people. Okay. It's not just one people. Not just the Jews, it's everybody. God sent his son for the nations. And God will get his inheritance through his kingdom work. Verse 17, I'm talking, amen, glory to God, amen. Verse 17, let's look at it. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let me read that one more time. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at, ha at hand. Another translation is near you. Jesus came after those 40 days of fasting and praying, saints. Fasting and praying is good for you. I know it. I don't like it, but I do it. Fasting and praying puts this flesh body under. Jesus' ministry of the three and a half years, he was beginning to go forth and what the Father told him to do on planet Earth. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And so verse 18. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And I won't, I won't get into all that. I want to jump down. He picked up the Zebedee boys who was called the Sons of Thunder. I want to jump on down to verse number 23. They followed him. He made them fishers of men. You know the story. Verse 23, my time is short, so I want to get, in, get you this foundational kingdom message, kingdom confrontation. Verse number 23, and Jesus went about Galilee teaching in the synagogues, listen to what he did, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. See that? And that, it's not me. This is what the words say. Jesus was being the in sample or the sample son for man, women too. That when you are called to a certain position or when you are called to a career, an area of society, there is a level of the kingdom in your belly. And we'll get into that in Luke chapter 17. But I wanted to show you the master and how what he did. We have to follow after what he did. We have to follow after how he did what he did. Amen. And so we can't go away from not doing what the Lord did. Right. Why? Because he was the example. He was called the second Adam. He was called the last Adam. Why was he called that? Because the first Adam dropped the ball and gave authority over to Satan. We have to really see this and really understand that that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Right. But he came to restore or or, or restitution ministry of restitution that talks about in Ephesians. But he came to get something back that was taken. 
our kingdom authority. Amen. Right? And so in verse number, continue 23. He preached the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now let me hold up. Wait a minute. Let me take, go a little slower. When he preached the kingdom, there was action. There was results of the kingdom, right? He healed all, he, he, uh, he, he preached the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, all of it. He said all, right? How about COVID-19, right? The Bible says, as he is, so are we, right? Now, 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 I said earlier, this is not religion. I'm, I'm talking religion. I'm talking about relationship. When Jesus preached the kingdom, he healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Where is the healing? I'm talking about notable miracles. The kingdom confrontation is the confront sickness. Kingdom confrontation. This is the word that the Lord gave me. Kingdom confrontation. You can't be afraid of confrontation, especially as it comes from Satan's camp. We have to confront the enemy where he's hurting God's people God, and all people God loves, everybody. All seven plus billion people God love everybody, okay? All right? So, so his will, because when folks stop beginning to see the kingdom operating and it be shown on CNN or Fox or, or, or on ABC or NBC, hallelujah, and some, some signs and wonders going to start appearing over this TV screen, the Lord showed me. And so we're getting ready to see the kingdom preached, the kingdom taught. And so signs and wonders and miracles, as you see some of us in the body of Christ that said this is done away with. The Bible ain't done away with it. Why is it done away with it? See, you got to have faith for the kingdom work to be done. Amen. And so I want y'all to see this. Now, verse 24. And his fame and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people, and they were taken with divers diseases and torments and those who were possessed with devils and those who were lunatics. Mental illness we see all around the city of Highland Park, the city of Detroit, even in the south where our second location is. People have these mental issues. It wasn't no issue to Jesus. He came preaching the kingdom and he took care of divers diseases, torments. And those who were possessed with devils. Some folks possessed with devils. I've seen them. <laughs> Amen. And those who were lunatics and those that had the palsy and he healed them. That's the kingdom. There must be a testimony of somebody coming forward. And the Lord spoke to me during the time of the COVID in March when it, it, uh, when it started happening. And I put it on Facebook. God said to me, and I put it on Facebook, that I put that same power in all of my children, they have the answer to all of what the devil is doing. Amen. And so it's about us assembling together. I didn't say going to church service on Sunday. There's nothing wrong with going to ch uh, church on Sunday. The Bible says don't forsake the assembling. Okay. But how about at work? How about at home, in the restaurant, whatever? I mean, I've been in restaurants. The Lord said, lay hands on her. I said, this lady eating. <laughs> you know, I'm just giving you an example. Tell this lady in CVS, tell her uh, that I need her to do this about her career. Just God operates outside of four walls of the church, okay? The church is not a building. Ecclesia is people called out. People. People are the church, okay? Now, I hear, you know, black uh, lives matter. That's good, right? But we must confront the spirit behind this natural epidemic, okay? We didn't see the uh, COVID come. You didn't see it, did you? People end up having it. Why? Where did it come from? Out of the spirit. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 91, there shall no plague come near your dwelling. But you got to confess the word. There takes faith to, to have the manifestation of the things that you believe the word says about you. Amen. My time is 22. I'm gonna, I got to discuss some minutes, man. 30 minutes, I ain't going to get it. I'm probably have to do an hour, but I ain't going to do it now. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So back to Jesus. And so he healed the palsy. 
and he healed them, all of them that came to him. Okay, verse 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So kingdom confrontation, y'all, make it real plain. Time spent with God, prayer, fasting, studying of the word, hearing from God. We act like that's not normal. I don't know anything. I got to hear from God. God told me to do this. He told me the name of the television <laughs> show. And folks like, huh? Yeah, God still talks. He named our church, Building a House Upon the Rock Christian Church. He named it. I named nothing. Why? Because I didn't, I didn't call myself. I didn't want, never wanted to preach. <laughs> Amen. I, I didn't want to do it. It's not something that I thought was what I was supposed to do on earth. But boy, God, he, uh, he arrested me on that one. Amen. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 17. So we see in Acts, we'll go over it again. Acts, he taught of things pertaining to the kingdom, right, for 40 days, right? Then his, 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 his earthly ministry, three and a half years, he taught of things. He began to preach the kingdom, right? What? What happened? Healings, deliverances, casting out devils, healing the palsy, healing lunatics. And so we have to begin to see the model. Jesus Christ is the model, okay? So folk don't believe it. That's fine. I know what I know. I know what I've seen. I'm not going to get into that, what I've seen. But this is what will bring down racism. This will bring down uh, poverty in these in these me metropolis cities to confront the demon spirit there oh preacher what you saying preacher i say there's something behind washington dc there's something behind the government that we don't see naturally we have to get a revelation okay amen luke 17 let's go there man i ain't got all day i'm be a, I, i'm long-winded boy in the pulpit but they said you and your fifth closing uh apostle I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Luke chapter 17, hallelujah to Jesus. Luke chapter 17, get there right quick. Oh, I got her up. I've been down south too long. Her up. Uh, Luke chapter 17, let's look at verse number 20. Hallelujah to Jesus. This last text, and we're going to continue next, next uh, Sunday with the same flow, okay? In verse number 20, real quick, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. Look what he asked them. What these religious people asking him. He answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. In the, in the Greek, observation is broken down to see it naturally, to observe something naturally. He was talking about in the law, right? The nation of Israel, the nation, nation of Israel had, 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 had kings, King David, King Solomon, and all the kings of Israel, right? And so these religious folk, and just today, they want to see some some natural that they you know they can see tangibly. But the, God is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in the spirit of the truth. And we got a well, minute. I got to hurry up. So He said, "The kingdom cometh not with the observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom is within you. Glory to God." And so I want to close on that note. I'll come back next Sunday at 9 a.m. I want to give you some more meat. Meditate this word. Study on Acts chapter one, one through four, Matthew four seventeen. 23 to 25, Luke 17, 20 and 21, so you can get some revelation. And so as, as, as I come back, there will be some things said that may not meet up with what you have been taught, right? And nothing against your church you go to or wherever you go, but you have to begin to seek God for yourself. You're going to have to do this for yourself because God does not. God's first thing is he come to an individual and he's coming to you. He's looking to visit you in your household, wherever you are, to reveal to you the truth about who you are in Christ. That that kingdom that I just read to you in the Bible, I, the, the, I didn't I didn't put it there. The kingdom is within you in your spirit. And we'll get into more John chapter three. That's another text I can bring to you, but I'm not. And so. What I want you to begin to is meditate the word yourself. Study to show thyself approved. Don't, your bishop, your pastor, whoever you go to to hear the minister, don't just count on what they say. Take the scriptures and read it for yourself. And I just want to bless. Let me pray for the audience. Father, we love you. 
Father, we just want to bless you and thank you for the privilege to come before your people in the city of Highland Park and the city of Detroit. And Father, I thank you that this word was spread forth in the atmosphere. We have put the enemy on notice. We're coming, we're confronting the enemy, Father God, because you have you told me this morning, we're going to confront the enemy with the kingdom message. And Father, I just want to give you praise. I'll call healing for anybody sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your healing power flow through the television, flow into the households, oh God. Deliver them, oh God. Anybody that's, that need jobs, anybody that need, need their, their, their rent paid, oh God. In the name of Jesus, if they will believe the word of a prophet, they'll get a prophet's reward, oh God. And Father, in the authority of Jesus, I bless them with your love, Father God, your goodness, oh God, that only you can give, oh God. How I adore you, Father God. I just want to bless you and thank you for the privilege and honor, Father, to go before your people, Father, as you bless them. Father, you strengthen them now, Lord, in the authority of Jesus. And if you have been blessed in the authority of Jesus, if you've been blessed by this message, the, uh, the announcements will come up. You'll see it on the screen anywhere you can sow a seed. It's in your heart. Whatever you, whatever's in your heart to sow, sow it. But I'll be back next week at the same time, 9 a.m., and I want you to have your Bibles. I know somebody on TV ain't had their Bibles. Get your Bible out so you can listen as I go forth. Amen. I'm Apostle Brian L. Morgan. And thank you. And I just thank you. Thank you for tuning in to building up God's kingdom. This TV broadcast, the first one. I bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.